<laughs> How's that for an obnoxious background? <laughs> So it's a cold day in December here in southern Idaho. Snow everywhere, uh, but blast to drive in because I have this big 1977 Jeep CJ7, 37-inch tires. But I digress. Today's topic, we've got somebody in the Facebook group with a question. Uh, it's a fairly common question, but it's got an unusual tweak to it. Uh, so I figured I'd do a video. Um, and in the description, I will link to the articles where we've kind of talked about this thing before. But Kiki here on the uh, Radiologic Technologist Group on Facebook, and you should be able to find a link to the group. We're over 7,000 strong now in there. It's awesome. Uh, two hours ago, they posted this question, and there's already nine comments from people. That's the beauty of this group, the solidarity, the power. Uh, but Kiki says, I want y'all's opinion. Uh, I would like to start the X-ray tech program and the two schools that can work with my schedule, key point number one, are Pima Medical Institute and the College of Healthcare Professions. Uh, Pima costs $46,208. Man, that's got a lot. When I went, I went to Pima, 2003, it was 18,000. Uh, CHCP is almost 50 grand. It's $49,635. So you're only talking like $3,300 difference between the two of them. 3,000 bucks is not a lot in comparison to the $50,000 we're talking about. So the cost isn't really the issue. So he says, uh, or she says, um, CHCP makes you do the limited scope first. And then an online completion program. That's that's concern number two. Um, and then the online completion program, so you're able to get your AAS. That's concern number three. Um, let me silence this. Um, threw me off track, stupid phone. Uh, also, Pima Medical has an acceptance process. While I think CHCP accepts everyone, concern number four, you better figure that out. Um, I'm leaning towards CHCP. I just hate that they split it up like that. I'm assuming you mean doing the limited scope first. Um, please help. I'm conflicted, but I know for sure. Please help. I'm conflicted, but I for sure know I want to start this program somehow, somewhere. Okay, cool. So the first decision is, are you going to do it or not? Right? So you're at that decision. A lot of people say, you know, uh, over the years, I've been doing this a long time and, and I'd be scanning something. And they say, you know, I, I, I would do what you're doing, but uh, I have kids, I have family, I have bills, I have to work. I don't know how to pay for it, all these things. And that's my first point right there is don't worry about any of that unless you decide you want to get in and then you've got to apply. Because if you apply and you don't get accepted, none of that other stuff matters. Doesn't matter how you're going to pay for it. Doesn't matter how you're going to work at the same time. You've got to apply and try to get in. So let's go back to the beginning. Um, I would like to start the X-ray program in the two schools that can work with my schedule. So it's really, it's impossible to do the X-ray program if you have to work at the same time and your employer and or school won't work with your schedule. Now, this particular post says that the schools can work with my schedule I'm not sure about that because schools never move. Schools never, if a school is eight to five, it's eight to five. They don't say, hey, Bob, you can come in on the weekends only so we can work with your schedule. So you need to make sure that you're clear on that. Maybe what you're saying is during your clinical rotations, you can do you know five in the morning to noon and then go to work or something like that. But classes are not, especially Pima, uh, are not malleable they don't move around they don't they don't move that kind of stuff so make sure you know what you're talking about there but the point of having two entities work in school that are able somebody's got to be able to flex because most jobs are eight to five monday through friday and most schools are eight to five monday through friday and most clinicals are eight to five monday through friday um the way i did it when i went to be able to do both is i did clinicals on the weekend when I did a clinical rotation. And then I also had a job when I had school during the week, I had a job on the weekend. I did two 16 hour shifts on the weekend at a hospital. I was an ICU tech 
two sixteens was 32 hours, which was considered full time. So I got my benefits and everything. But there you you have to if you have to work and schools will tell you that you, you shouldn't work when you're going to school. But that's because they want you to get the best grades possible. So they look good. But reality is a lot of us have to work to pay our bills. So the fact that you say the two schools will work with your schedule is a plus. I'm not sure how that's working, but that's a plus. Um, the fact that they're both 46,000 and 49,000 kind of nullifies that part of it because you're not talking very much of a difference. The delta on that, like I said, is only three grand. Um, the next part, CHP make you do the limited scope first and then an online completion program so you're able to get your AAS. That's three different things in that sentence. You have to get a limited scope first, which I'm not a big fan of, but I'm not against it. But it's kind of like a lot of nursing programs make you be a CNA first in the program or even to apply to get your CNA license to get into the program. Part of me thinks that that's because it's a money grab. They want you to have to go. They know so many people want into the program that they can say, hey, in order to get in, you got to go to this other program we have. And that's how they keep that program fed and full is by making it a prerequisite. But there is uh, there is method to the madness, because if you know that stuff, it makes you better at the other stuff. So in other words, if you know how to be a CNA, then you already know how to take vitals and you know how to you know lift patients, ergonomics, proper lifting techniques, patient care. You know a lot of the basics so that when you get in the nursing program, you have a solid background. By becoming a limited tech first, you get a lot of those basics, so radiobiology, patient safety, proper lifting, positioning, uh, techniques. You, you get a lot of the basics, but it's it's not necessary. So before I forget, the question that leads to is, how long? Because you didn't say how long these programs are. Does the CHCP program, is their program longer because you have to do the limited first and then go through the regular program? Because everywhere I've ever seen, it's two separate programs. Uh, I haven't seen a bridge. Well, I have seen a bridge program, which means like if you were trained how to do x-ray in the military, it wasn't a full two-year radiology program, but it was enough to get you by so that uh, some people, some schools came out with a bridge program that didn't make you go through the full two years to become a rad tech. It was kind of a, like it's called a bridge. It, it teaches you what you've been missing in order to sit for the ART exam. So there are bridge programs. So, you know, I don't know how CHCP is doing this. So you need to find that out. Is, is CHCP, you know, is it a two year regular x ray program and then they're tacking on the limited to it? So it's longer than your PEMA two year program. You need to find that out. So, you know, my feelings on the limited scope is, is it can get you a job if that's what you really need. And it can get you a job faster than regular x-ray because it's a lot shorter school, but it's also limited in what you can do, which means you're limited in the money you'll make. They won't pay you as much to be a limited, just like CNA and RN. The CNAs make, you know, 12 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour. Nurses make 30. So to me, it's better all the way around to go straight into x-ray and get it done and move on. Um, so that's what I have to say about that part. You need to find out, you know, the length of the programs and compare apples to apples. Um, and the AAS doesn't matter at all, as far as I'm concerned, unless the ARRT has changed something recently that says you cannot sit for the board exams unless you get an AAS upon completion of your rad tech school, then I wouldn't even worry about the AAS. The only time your degree level matters, and now I've got a doctorate, so I've gone all the way up. And I know firsthand, it doesn't matter at all unless you want to get into management. Uh, an x-ray tech without an AS and an x-ray tech with an AS are basically taught the same thing in x-ray school and take the same board exams. And when you go apply at the hospital, all they're going to say is, are you ART certified? Yes or no. They're not going to say what type of degree. And every time you get another degree, you don't get any more pay. You don't get any. The only incentive is to you and your career and your knowledge. When I was going for, I had my bachelor's before I even got into x-ray school. But when I went for my master's, everybody at the hospital was like, why are you going for your master's? It's not going to get you any more money. And I'm like, I know I'm not doing it for more money. I'm doing it because it's a personal goal. And the same thing for my doctorate. It's not going to get you paid any more money in the world of radiology if you have a doctor. I know it's a personal goal of mine. So, uh, you know, the AAS, is that a personal goal of yours or, you know, Make sure you understand if you need the AAS or why you want the AAS. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure Pima can work that in because they have an online BSRS, a Bachelor's of Science in Radiologic Science. Um, you can take that to get your bachelor's after you complete their program. So maybe that's something we'll talk about at the end here. Uh, so next, Pima Medical has an acceptance process, and I think CHCP accepts everyone. You need to find out for sure there. I don't know what CHCP does. I know Pima does. Pima has an interview. They have uh, they, they have a point system. At least they did when I went there, and that was 20 years ago. But I think it's still the same way. I went there. My wife went there. My stepdad went there before I did. So we've got three in our family that went to Pima. Um, so I can tell you all about the Pima program in, in Arizona. Um, and they probably haven't changed much. But um, there, is a, there is a process of application. And you do need to know that because if you're if you're purpose is to hurry up and get in and get out and get out in the world and start making money and if chcp just lets anybody in uh and pima makes you go through the process there's a chance you may not get into pima your first time around so that plays into how soon you get into the workforce but um that being said you need to find that out because if they both have an application process and there's a chance of getting denied on both then you're apples to apples if not then one has an advantage in certain ways um and then it says i'm leaning towards chcp i just hate that they split it up like that i'm i agree uh there's no point i mean I, I really think it's about feeding more students into another program so the school makes more money but you can't deny that those those skills make you a better tech when you get into the extra program so if they can do it all in the same two-year program and and compete with pima as far as the length of the program then maybe it's not such a bad idea um, but, uh, uh, so that's the end of the question. Um, I can tell you that another thing that you haven't maybe considered on here, you know, there's the big private versus public conundrum, and I don't think CHCP is considered public, but, uh, when you're going for additional degrees, like I, I went to ultrasound school after x-ray school and the ultrasound school I went to was a public school. It was a public community college. Pima is a private technical institute. The credits do not transfer at all. Uh, everything I took in x-ray at Pima did not apply. I had to retake some classes like in anatomy and physiology at Gateway because it was a public school. So you need to know how CHCP works. If you take class at CHCP and then you decide you want to go for a bachelor's at, say, Weber State University or some other public university or college, are your CHCP credits going to transfer? Because Pima's won't. But there have been times like when I got to my, can't remember if it was my master's or my doctorate, but they basically took my entire transcript and they ha I had to provide all the uh, catalog uh, descriptions of the class, which isn't that hard to find. And uh, they went through and looked at the class and looked at what was taught in the class according to the catalog description and determined whether or not that would take the place of something I had to take in their program. And I did get I think three or four classes waived in my doctorate because of all the other stuff I've had over the years. So you need to know that not all schools transfer to other schools and you need to know if CHCP transfers to public or not um, because Pima does not transfer to public. It does transfer to, to some privates like, like I'm talking about Pima has their own bachelor's program. So you could clearly get into the bachelor's program when you graduate their x-ray program to get your BSRS. And the last I heard, they were talking about a master's program at some point. So um, you know, there's upward mobility there that you've got to consider. With Pima, you can continue to go to their own school and get higher degrees. Uh, CHCP, I don't know that they offer a bachelor's, et cetera. And I don't know if they transfer out like, um, like if you went to a community college. Um, I do see some comments popping up. Somebody said... Uh, Somebody said, you know, neither one of those should be chosen. You should go to a community college where it's cheaper. Well, that's great, but and that's true. But community colleges, because they're so much cheaper, have a three-year waiting list or longer. So it doesn't even matter if you have what it takes to get in, you're on a waiting list. So I've got articles and videos where we've talked about, you know, you, you got to play out that timeline. You can get into a public x-ray school system for like under $9,000 still. 9,000 versus 50, right? That's crazy. But you have to wait three years to get in. So if you do the math, if you get into one private for 50,000, 
and you get out in two years, then starting on year three, you're making, you know, 60, 70, 80,000 dollars a year, whatever it is, versus what you're making now. Say you're making 30,000 a year now and you come out making 80,000, that's 50,000 extra a year you're going to make in year three if you went to the public. If you wait for the pri or, or the private, if you wait for the public and it takes three years to get in, and then you've got two years of x-ray school, you're at your five before you're out making x-ray money. So you're you're three years ahead in making that extra money if you go to the private school that costs you more to get in. Does that does that make sense? So you got to think about it. It's not it's not just you know it's not just about who is cheaper to get into. You have to look at the time it takes to get in and and how long it takes the ROI return on investment to make back what you've paid. Um, and you're typically not going to find any cheaper money than student loan money. Although I will always recommend not getting student loans. Sometimes in your life, there's a time when you have to take it because there's no other way to pay for stuff. But I have a post on my blog, the radiologictechnologist.com, that goes over about 13 different ways to pay for x-ray school. So you should check that out and I'll try to post it. Um, so I'll stop there. That's all I can read through everybody's comments, but you guys can do that on your own. Um, that's what I have to say about the differences in those two programs. And I hope this helps. And uh, hit the like button if it does, and we'll see you in the next video.